How are you doing today, sir? I'm great. As I'm feeling you... inspired on this sunny Austin day. <laughs> uh, I've said this many times to you before, and I'll say it again. I am a big fan of your work. Thank you. It is very cool to talk to you today. Thank you. Uh, so talk, let, let's jump. Everyone watching this will have not seen the movie yet. So let's talk a little bit about why you get to be at South by having a film here, what it's about. Well, I've uh, spent uh, uh, p much of the past seven years or so um, whittling away on a massive home renovation project, um, which um, really was a major journey for me in a, in a, in a much bigger sense than, the, than what I had kind of set out to do. And early on, I realized that it was an enormous task, and I, I brought on a fellow filmmaker friend of mine, and we, we chronicled the, the journey, and I didn't know what the end result would be. I, I, I didn't know uh, how far I would go with the renovation, but um, it was a... Um, it's a pretty intimate look into uh, you know, much of the uh, personal experiences that I've uh, uh, gone through that, that have shaped a lot of things, and, um, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a journey. <laughs> it's, it's, as my, I, I showed the film to uh, Ryan Johnson, and as he so eloquently uh, put it, it's renovation porn. Um, <laughs> Um, but it's, uh, it's also far deeper than that. Uh, you, from what I understand, uh, you wanted to get, talk a little bit about the house and, and up in, I guess, upstate New York, mm -hmm. talk a little bit about how you decided that location and... Well, I mean, I've had a, I've, I've always had the dream of a country home. I've also had the, the idea of, of having a, a real creative space to run off and uh, retreat to and also continue to um, be creative do you know whether it's gonna be painting or making music or you know restoring an old car or whatever it is you need a, you need a space and a space that's conducive to that and and I love nature and I'm from New York and you know always going up to the countryside was um, enriching uh, uh, revitalizing for the spirit and uh, I had been making a film at the time where I was playing a character who was um, very conscious of the fact that he wanted to um, um, have something very real in, in his experiences and his life. And um, I feel very blessed. I play many interesting characters. I've lived many lives essentially through that and traveled the world, but I wanted to kind of find a place to come home to that um, was, um, that felt like home and that I could also continue to work on in a creative way. And, and I, I fell in love with the structure. I found it. I was away in Belgrade shooting a film and I fell in love with this structure and I came home and I, I went after it. <laughs> Uh, when you make a, a film like this, it gets personal, and it gets, and you, it also reveals where you're going to be living, your space. Unfortunately, that's all already been revealed. I mean, I um, that was revealed when I when I first bought the place because you know people tend to talk, and uh, so it was already reported upon, and people knew about it. And then you know we had also agreed to do a photo shoot uh, at the time when I. Had, first bought the place to kind of get us all in the gear. And so that's there's nothing new in, the, in that respect. Um, well, I meant more about like showing where you're going to be working and, and being creative. Uh, Was there any apprehensive about being, apprehension about being so revealing and revealing all the stuff that you were going to be doing? Um, of course, there's a degree of, of uh, I feel that it, there's a necessity to to tell a story like this, um, and to be authentic to it, and to not be afraid of incorporating things that that are revealing. 
part of when the film project took shape, part of what was so interesting to me was that this is really a universal uh, quest that most young people get to a place in their life where they really long for a sense of home. And actors are probably a bit more displaced than most because we're constantly shedding ourselves and away on location. And so um, I think that's something that everyone can relate to. And I also think, yes, I, I am required to reveal a, a bit of things that are very personal to, to myself, but I'm unashamed of those things and and I am in essence revealing much of myself in the work that I do every day in in the vulnerability that I must possess to play characters uh, and connect to the emotions and the states of minds of those characters and relay that essentially I have to channel all of those feelings and I have to express that so on on one level, I've given in to a degree of that, and um, and you know this is an artistic endeavor, and sometimes you have to make certain sacrifices to to do that. You did the music for the film. I did some of it, yes. Okay, so talk a little bit about uh, because if I'm not mistaken, this is your first time contributing music, or have you done it in? The I have done a little bit. I did a film. I did some music. I actually produced a track with with some rappers for um, for Restaurant, which was a movie I did many years ago with Eric Bross directed um, early in my career. I was going to say that's a long time. That's ago. a very long time ago. So I've been making music since then, um, and prior to that, actually, um, I was going to do the score for Love the Hard Way, which was a real dream of mine to do, and I. Was fortunate enough to book the pianist, and I went and shot that, and was that learning Chopin, so that took precedent. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> um, worked out. Yeah, but um, I, I guess you know, I, this is definitely the most uh, all in that I've been on any project. I mean, I've, 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 my company's financed the endeavor. I've, you know bringing people into my life and my home. I'm, and I think the, the castle is perhaps the protagonist, but I'm the co-lead. And, you know, um, we'll talk a I little co-directed and, you know, so there's, there's a lot of, I mean, that's the beauty of it is that it's this endless, um, endlessly creative process, which, which, I, which I, not only the, the, rebuilding of the home and integrating all of the things that I find aesthetically uh, pleasing and, and uh, you, know, you know, all the, the elements that I'm drawn to that I've tried to incorporate that were unusual to the, that complemented the, the kind of classic architecture of the, uh, you know, turn of the century stone artwork and then incorporating other elements and Asian influences that I love and, and so I, I feel like the whole journey has just been you know it allowed me a, a great deal of, of creative freedom I'm very curious about the type of music that you oh sorry I digress this was all a question about music I, no, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so long-winded sometimes I'm sorry no no it's fine uh, I, because most music people, yes well people who are going to be watching this interview yes. will not have heard the music yet yes. so talk a little bit about how you chose what yes. the music yeah. and also uh, is it you know do you have a lot of your music online? Can people find it? Is it personal where it's just in, you know, it's very personal to you? It is personal to me, but it's just a matter of me being behind the curve with uploading something or me following through and actually doing a cohesive album. It's not that I'm afraid to share it. It's not that I've, you know, I've, I've been making music for so long, but then I, I, you know, it's like this. This has been going on for seven years and I just kept it under wraps. And I've only done so because I wanted to wait till I have something to share with people to then speak about it. And and so this was an opportunity to incorporate some music. It was kind of a, some of it was a guide track as uh, Kevin Ford, my co-director and editor was editing and we were kind of giving him some inspiration for some of them. And it was before 
I was reaching out to artists that I like and seeing if we could actually uh, acquire music for the documentary that is amazing and we have we have such beautiful music that, that I'm, I'm really grateful to have. John Frusciante who I think very rarely uh, contributes music to film um, was very generous to, to allow us to use some music and really really great pieces that have spoke speak to me in, in, in many ways and um, one of the guys working on the on the on my property who continues to be in my life is also a very accomplished musician and a piece of his is in the in the in the movie um, a great friend of Kevin's and uh, an Austin local who's contributed a lot of music Blake from Skies Falling and so there's there's a lot of really interesting um, eclectic music that I feel really enriches the tone of the picture and then you know mine has a place in it it's it's another extension I guess of of you know how I process things and and, and what what comes out musically you obviously like Austin like I do yeah. was it always the goal for South by or was this and was, when did you you know what I mean there was no goal in that sense. I didn't know until I didn't have a, a, a release, you know, idea fully formulated. I just knew that South by is a home that is very documentary friendly. I like the I like the vibe here. I think people are pretty open minded, and um, I think it's very filmmaker. It's very supportive of the artistic elements in a filmmaker's life, um, and it's very supportive to new filmmakers. And essentially, I'm a new filmmaker. And you know, unfortunately, Robert Rodriguez can't come tonight. But you know, I, I've shot Predators here, as you know, and I, I uh, he's such a big part of Austin. And Kevin, my co-director, is from Austin. Linkletter is a friend, and, and so there is a, a filmmaker community here uh, that that I feel a connection to, and um, and the festival was very supportive of us, so I'm, I'm happy to be here. I was going to say Austin uh, is a. It's so interesting to me. Let's, let's talk about Austin for a second because mm -hmm. I can't believe this city is part of Texas because so much of Texas is, in my opinion, um, has some issues. But Austin is so beautiful and welcoming. It's just it's so interesting that it's like such an opposite to... It's a little less weird, though, than it used to be, unfortunately. Well, there's a lot of money now in yes, Austin, and, and yes. that, that pushes out the weird. And New, it, uh, New York went through a similar transition as well, um, and it's still a wonderful place. But unfortunately, when a city is revitalized on that level and, and infused with, you know, major real estate projects and all these things, all the really interesting artistic people have to find other places to, to live. And that, that's, that's a little bit of a shame, but, but it'll, it'll, I, I think it's a wonderful place. I think, you know, that we're, you know, I, there's something to be said for prosperity and I'm, I'm glad that things are booming, but I liked, I liked so much the intimacy of this town, I felt, you know, I've been on location in many places, and and they don't leave me feeling like, oh, I could make this place home. You sure. Know? And I agree with you. I, I don't know if I'd feel that in many places elsewhere, but I, I feel like Austin. Um, it's got a, it's still it's still got a really great vibe. Yeah, it's interesting though because I saw you filming Predators and in Austin, and it seems like every year this city is changing mm. because of the influx of capital and people. Yeah. And and I'm sure you noticed today the construction everywhere. Yes, there's cranes on every block. It's you know, it's, the, the weird of Austin is a, there's probably a short time frame left. Well, we just went down South Congress because I wanted to just take a little drive, and uh, I had asked Kevin about um, are the airstream still here. He's like, no, man, they put up all these high rises, there's this new structure here and there. And, but they were still there, they were just tucked away. They, they had like an encampment, but I loved all these guys with their polished up Airstreams, you know. No, 100%. They were, they were, it was awesome, so um, they're still, still hanging in there. 
Hundred percent. I definitely want to touch on. Uh, you just worked with a filmmaker, or are working with a filmmaker, whose last film I loved, which was The Devil's Double. Oh yeah. And uh, so you're working with Lee. Lee have yeah. you have you wrapped on it? Are you filming it? Or we're we're pretty much wrapped. Um, we uh, yeah, it's a, it's an epic endeavor, Emperor. It's um, it's very exciting. I think Lee is just a wonderful wonderful guy he's a great filmmaker I mean, Once Were Warriors is one of my favorite movies exactly uh, he blew me away then and um, yeah he's got a he's got a real unique voice and, well, uh, well the thing that took me with Devil's Double is they made that pretty low budget and it looked a lot bigger yeah. than they had the money for mm -hmm. is that similar with Emperor it wasn't that low I mean I don't know what the budget was for Devil's Double but this was a this was a pretty substantial European film, um, but the fight sequence, the battle sequences that we, we, you know, I played Charles V, and there's inevitably a lot of fighting at that era. And um, um, we work extensively on those battle sequences, and they look epic. From what I've seen, they're they're really epic. And and you know, you know, I trained for weeks on on you know, sword fight choreography. That you know, it's remarkable. Um, so there, he puts, I think he puts a lot of thought into the prep for that, which then, you know, expedites the, the filming process. So then you, you know what you're going after. And, and, um, I think that allows you to use your resources more effectively. I have to jump backwards for a second because I recently watched The Pianist. It was on cable. It's one of those movies that if it comes on, I literally can't turn away. And I don't use this term lightly, but it is a fucking masterpiece. It is so, so good. Looking back on the experience now, and I know you've probably talked about it a thousand times, and I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but what do you remember most about the making of the film? Is there any, like, because I'm assuming on every movie, there's probably a day that was either a disaster or amazing. Was there anything that, you know... Oh, well, first of all, not, not many experiences in the... In the my professional career um, are comparable to that. Um, um, you know. Sorry for cursing, by the way. I didn't even notice. Okay, just throwing that out there. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Was it? <laughs> I, feel, I feel very strongly about that film. Okay. So. Was it a fucking masterpiece? Yeah, it's, it's that a fucking said? Okay. Well, yeah. I didn't. I didn't harp on the first part. Or just making you. sure. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, you know, Roman is profound. And uh, his his um, his discipline is is really um, um, contagious, and uh, obviously, I had such a an immense responsibility in portraying Spielman and and what that represented to the world and to him personally from his own experiences. So, the what I recall is that. That response, that sense of responsibility, which I already had a very strong work ethic. I was very disciplined with my work because partially I need to do all the homework for me to feel connected, for me to feel truthful. And I, I don't feel that it would be fair for me to ask the audience to believe something if, I'm, if I don't believe that. Sure. And it takes a lot of work to you're in another time period and you're working with a dialect and you're you're dealing with such tremendous issues that you personally have been fortunate enough not to experience you have to do a lot of work to get to that place and I, I spent most of my time in isolation when I made that movie I, I you know for the six weeks prior where I was dieting and learning to play Chopin I didn't socialize with anyone and I was kind of bombarding myself with images from that time period and history lessons and watching documentary footage and spending time with Roman working. And um, that didn't really let up. We shot six days a week for six months. Roman didn't use a stand-in. Um, so I was on set you know, morning to night. Uh, there were six weeks without another actor on the boards. It was just Roman, a crew, and myself. 
and you know, 18 hour days. And so it was the most challenging experience and at the same time the most informative in many senses, in, in uh, my sense of awareness and respect for all the good fortune that I've experienced, the lack of real suffering that I have endured personally, the greater understanding of the loss of my own ancestors and the loss of many other people's ancestors and the horrors that continue to exist in the world, Africa, and the, the, the lack of the level of cruelty and the lack of freedom that so many people have in this world. And so that shifted something in me profoundly. And um, I was young, I was very young at that time, I was 27, so um, I had enough maturity to grasp it all, but it just finally pulled me out of whatever lingered of, you know, my carelessness that perhaps that all young guys have and you know it, it I'm grateful for that so that's what that's what resonates and continues to resonate with me every day I would imagine I mean that movie means a lot to me I would imagine you've met a lot of people over the years mm -hmm. where you know it continues um, I'm gonna now switch subjects completely which is hard to move from okay. but uh, yeah exactly uh, I'm definitely curious you had this documentary under wraps mm. for a long time. Yeah. So how many other things are under wraps right now that are hidden away <laughs> that you are not talking about yet that I would be... I was That's on set with you in Predator. Good journalism, but... Right. You, you didn't talk about this then. Yeah. It's like... It's, oh, I just saw Robert yesterday and he's like, wait, so you were working <laughs> You were working on this thing when we were making Predators? I said, yeah. He said, you didn't submit, mention anything about it. I said, well, it wasn't ready. Right. Exactly. Yeah, so, so. I, my, my question though is... How much other stuff is currently under um, wraps? <laughs> there, there are a few things in the works, but um, not not as elaborate as this. This is uh, this was a big one. This is a this is a big. Um, there's almost a decade of my life invested into this. So this is. Uh, I'm I'm. There's been many times in my life that I've wished I had um, taken the time to write down ideas that, I, that came to me that have long gone and perhaps document something or wish that, you know, I even had audio recordings that I'd recorded throughout India and in my travels and really beautiful things and waking up with monks in the morning and beautiful things that I really wanted to incorporate in my music and all these things. And it got stolen out of a hotel room in Paris. I left it on my table. And they probably thought they were going to get some juicy thing on there which they got some monks chanting but it meant so much to me and I was so sad to have lost those because they were they were you know malaria on malaria medicine and mosquitoes in the room and smoke filled atmosphere and narli and and, and in uh, um, uh, on the Ganges and just like these places and I so you know I'm I'm very connected to those sensory things and then those things, if I can incorporate that in the music that I'm creating, then it builds upon that. And, and So fortunately, we documented this and fortunately, it didn't all get lost. There was some footage that would have been so amazing here that, that I, I'm, I'm, I've lost. But um, really, the whole approach of this and the beauty of this is kind of like my mother's, my mother's photographer, my mother's Sylvia Plahi, she's an amazing ph photographer and her photography is also very much a part of the documentary and all the still imagery is, is my mother's. And, you know, she's the type of artist that she is present and captures it and, and sees it and is ready to, t to, to see what's going on within the image that's beautiful and strange and she captures it and if she misses it she misses it she's not setting something up it's not a studio the lighting isn't perfect 
but it's real and it's beautiful. And that's a similar approach that the Maisels have with their, their approach to documentary filmmaking. And so I have this within me and Kevin shares that approach. And so I found someone who could be with me throughout this journey and hopefully catch the magic. And we caught so much. And it's a remarkable thing to, to find the narrative storyline and, and make something cohesive of it. And the, the building of the rebuilding and giving life back into the barn structure is one achievement. And making it through all the obstacles is an achievement. And then making another piece of, another creation that kind of encapsulates this whole journey is also an achievement. So I'm, I'm really grateful that we have that. And, uh, and uh, I think when I'm older, it'll be really remarkable to look at it, back at it because there are so many moments that are even in the film that I've forgotten. Yeah, I, I honestly can't wait. Um, thank you so much for your time today. As I've said many times, good luck with everything thank in the you. future. Looking forward to the other documentary you're secretly filming right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs>